Hello, my name is Nancy Decker. I'd like to give you a short tutorial on how to make your own potholder loops from t-shirts, from start to finish, even choosing the right kind of t-shirt. I think you should watch the entire video before deciding if you'd like to go ahead. Why did I decide to do it myself? Well, I love making them so much and I do donate them or give them away to people, so I couldn't keep up with the finances of buying the professional loops. It is really nice to have the color availability from whatever t-shirt you find. And it's fun to find the t-shirts. The supplies you'll need will be the Ulfa knife, a straight edge, Usually it's in the same place as you buy the self-healing cutting mat. About 36 inches by 24. T-shirts can get wide or long. Fabric shears and, of course, a t-shirt. And where do you find the t-shirts? I find them at Goodwill, where they're color-coded usually. Uh, St. Vincent's. You can you get them out of your own wardrobe. Uh, the Dollar Tree had a whole bin of them the other day. That was a surprise or rummage sales, garage sales. Choosing the t-shirts, it's always a risk. So this is where you could get involved uh, with some money. And um, they have to be 100% cotton, so you're looking at the tags. The ones that say Pima or Cool Technology don't seem to work. They may be 100% cotton, but they're a risk. The athletic ones are almost the best. Uh, store brands, again, I think they probably have something uh, maybe to keep them from wrinkling. There's something in most store brands that even though they're 100% cotton and you do the tests on them in the store, they just don't seem to work for me. When you're standing in the store or you're testing the t-shirt, you stretch them and they need to give as you stretch them on the cross grain and recover. If you stretch them and they just stay sitting there and slowly go back, that's probably not going to work. You test at home then by removing a hem with your scissors and you stretch it. It should turn in with a curl. Here's some examples. My granddaughter needed lavender to go with her purple loops to make a present for someone. And boy, lavender is a hard color to find around here anyway. So I, here, here I am cutting off the hem of this t-shirt. I usually use the sleeve. So I'm cutting it off. And now I'm just going to cut a one and a half inch strip across the bottom of that sleeve. So I can test it. This is the final test. Ah, it didn't curl. So I wasted $3.99. I know it stretched and recovered, but for some reason it didn't curl. So you do have weight sometime, and in the garbage it went. When you find a t-shirt and it fits all the qualifications, you're just so you know, you will not be using the logos. You, you end up cutting them out or just slicing over them. Uh, the paint is too thick, and so then the loops don't curl right. Uh, could be a big caricature picture on the front. Could be the your favorite... Uh, the football team, but all that painting and uh, silk screening won't work. Now, I did have one of my shirts that had a light silk screen, and it seemed good. Remember, though, you'll never, if you get, I cut all the loops out of this, you'll never see all these pretty colors in a loop because it's going to turn in towards these colors, so you won't see that. Um, it doesn't matter what's on there, but the light silk screen seemed good. All right, here's the sizes, and you could push pause to get these sizes um, yourself. I just don't have a video camera. I just have a regular camera that takes videos. All right, the Pro Loops are 8 inches. I cut them 8 inches by 1 and a half. The Traditional Loops, I cut 5 inches by 1 and a half. Once in a while, you can adjust it according to the fabric, but not very often. When you cut the fabric, try and cut two layers of thickness and leave them together as you pile them up in piles. Then you're going to put them in baggies according to size and color. Um, the 
as you can see, I have the baggies labeled little, little, which means traditional, and big, big, which means the pro looms. I'm going to cut, snip these later, which is in the next video, but I'm too tired right now, so I'm just going to put them in baggies and put them away. White is not, one white t-shirt is not the same color as another white t-shirt. So that's, and that goes with all, for all the colors. So that's why I put them in baggies. When you do go and cut them out, I forgot to say, put a towel underneath. Otherwise the fibers go everywhere. So here would be cutting them. You're going to fold two together in half and get ready to do the snipping. And this will be the actual loop making. You snip from the folded edge through the middle to about a fourth, I'd say even almost three eighths inches from the cut edge. You're going to snip around off the two ears on each edge. Then at this point I always separate the loops and I give them a tug. Um, it, it may be that I cut too close to the edge. It may be that I find that my goodness these are going to have, these are really too stretchy. I should have cut them. Um, differently, but you're going to separate each loop and give them a tug. If they break, they break. Then I buy these shower curtain uh, rings, I should have put rings rather than hooks, from Target. And uh, they are like $1.45 for 12 of them. And I start putting the loops on them, again, separating color from size. Then I found these scarf hangers at the Dollar Tree. Look at that, they have five huge holes and then I hook those shower loop rings onto these scarf hangers. Again, they're like $1.25 each. They come in gray or they come in black. Here's my closet. The black scarf hangers hold my pro loops that I've made. On the right, the gray scarf hangers from Dollar Tree hold the traditional loops. This is where I keep my loops. They're always out. I can go in the closet. Um, I can think about, gee, Christmas is coming up. I am not really seeing a lot of, a lot of a, a green color or a lot of a true red color. So then I can go and search for those colors in t-shirts. All right, here goes the actual loop placement. I don't see anybody talking about this, and this is so important. You stretch the loop out, make sure both ends stay straight, and even even when uh, even when you start doing the weft and going, you know, in and out and up and over and under, uh, they have to stay like this. The one on the left, I'm just showing you what it would look like if you did every other loop, every other yeah hook. Again. It doesn't look good right now, but it'll look great in just a little bit. Oh, here I had two broken loops. Oh well. Um, make sure what, make sure if you're if you need 18 loops for a project, uh, 18 black ones, that you probably have 20 with you. You are going to break some loops. All right. Again, here's probably close to the same picture I showed you, just showing up a little closer how they have to be laid. I guess you'd say the messy side, the side that curls under towards the center on both sides has to be up. The back of the loom actually doesn't look bad, but some of your patterns, it's different than the front and the back. So they're both are, front and back are acceptable. Here I am just, again, probably finishing something here and um, stretching them out. Alrighty, now to cast off, this is the way I do it. I go in through the back loop with my crochet hook, then pick up the next loop, again going in from the back. Now it's the white loop I'm going to pull over the hook. Hopefully I can get a hold of what I call the hood, and when you pull it over, it just makes the whole thing look nicer. There I am a little farther. There, and there's a finished project product. The edge is a little more rustic looking than the pro loops, professional loops, 
but I think it's acceptable. I probably have adjusted some of them, but not many. You just kind of leave it rustic looking. Here's just some of the um, the Prolum ones I have, and I uh, when people come over, when I go to places um, that maybe some people are having a meeting, and I think they could all everybody could use one. They all pick the one that they want. It fits their personality. It fits their mood. Uh, maybe they have it in mind to give it to someone else. Here's some mug rugs. And these are, I probably make more of these. I've probably given away almost 50 of them. And here's what I have in my supply now. Again, I save them up. And um, when I think of a place that could use them, I take them. And I am totally surprised at which ones which people take. So I have stopped making them specifically for someone in mind unless someone asks me about specific colors and I never know what loops I have available either. So thank you so much for watching. Um, this is something I've wanted to do because I really feel I've mastered it. Have a good day.